Good morning, and welcome to our morning service for the seventh Sunday of Easter. This morning we're going to start off with the penitential rite on page 45. The sacrifice of God was a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we, we have, have sinned against, against you in, in thought, word, and deed, deed by what we have done and, and by what we have left undone. We have not, not loved, loved you with our whole heart. heart. We have, have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the, the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. Christ has been raised from the dead and will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. And we'll have our readings, please. reading from the book of Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were outstanding that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out over the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have. So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory, his righteousness, 
has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord. All you lands, lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Second reading is from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The third reading is from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Father, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Well, about a week ago, Louise and I got our wills done here at North and Company in Vulcan. We know as many people say that there are only two things certain in this world, both being death and taxes. And all I know is every year I have to do my taxes, and every year that goes by, more of my older colleagues that I have worked with in the past have passed away. I lost a really close friend here about a year ago in April, who I worked with at Medicine Hat. And then a couple of guys that I knew from Calgary EMS passed away within the last month, all under the age of 70. It's important to realize that as much as we avoid death, none of us are getting out of here alive. So it's a good thing and it's a good idea to have our house in order. So if something does happen, our last wishes are not only recorded, but for legal reasons, everyone in the family knows how Louise and I would like our estate divided. It's a kind of insurance that one has that things will be done the way we would like in order to be fair to everyone in our immediate family. Now, yesterday afternoon, Bill, my father-in-law, stopped in and we had an impromptu front porch visit, socially distanced, of course. And we got talking about the third reading for today. Now, Bill mentioned something very interesting about Jesus' high priestly prayer, and that's what we've heard here today that I would have never thought about before. He mentioned that when he preached on this prior, he preached on it as Jesus' last will and testament to the Father before his death and crucifixion. So here Jesus asked the Father on behalf of the ones that he has given to keep him and to keep them in the Father's name. Jesus prays for those disciples with the exception of Judas Iscariot and all those that God will give him in the future as well. Jesus' sheep are precious to him and he asks God to keep them safe and in him. Now Jesus knows the opposition and the dangers that they will face in the upcoming months and years. And so he asks his Father to protect them and keep them safe and to sanctify them. It means to keep them set apart as being holy. So this prayer just doesn't cover them and the early disciples, but it extends to each one of us today that call ourselves Christian. This prayer is of the most serious nature, as Jesus also asked the Father to protect us from the evil one as well. Jesus knows that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, waiting for someone to devour. So, the Lion of Judah asks his father to protect them from a powerful, but not all-powerful lion who will seek to destroy them. And the moment that that prayer is asked, it is enacted, as if it was a legal agreement between the father and the son. Jesus has asked, and his father has not only heard the prayer, but he has also answered it at the same time. So you might think, how is this all possible, like, to be protected? If we look back at the history of the apostles, James was executed under the reign of Nero. Peter was supposedly crucified upside down. And as we go through the list of apostles, John was the only one to live to a ripe old age. And he was relegated to a small island as punishment. I am sure there was no posh hospice or shelter or a senior's facility for him to spend his last few years. Things were tough for the early Christians. They lived and died for their faith, and no one knew when the time was coming when their blood had to be spilled for their belief in Christ. So at all times, they had to be prepared. Martyrdom was not far off, and not far away, and it seemed in the early church that martyrdom was also a calling for some of the early believers. In spite of all the risks and dangers associated with being a Christian in the early part of the church, I believe that Jesus was asking the Father not just to keep them safe physically, 
but more so to preserve their unity with him and the Father, even if that commitment and faith and unity with the Father resulted in their physical deaths. Their death would be a victory and an encouragement for other Christians. And this particular day that we live in, it seems so paradoxical in our society to think that way. However, if we think about what the Apostle Paul said, to live is Christ and to die is gain. The intimacy that Jesus had with the Father in prayer is also important to note here. He prayed this in front of his disciples. So there was no falling asleep here on the disciples' part. Jesus asked the Father this in front of those he chose to be with him during his earthly ministry and to those who would be responsible for carrying the message of the risen Christ forward to all the earth. The final prayer before his capture, trial, and execution as a common criminal shows us that Jesus cared deeply for his sheep. He asked God to protect them. But more than that, he asked him to protect them spiritually, to preserve them and keep them surrounded by his protection and to be the guardians of their soul. Prayer, quiet, and seclusion in the midst of a busy life and a busy calling gave Jesus, Jesus still took time to be with the Father. And being with the Father fostered an intimacy truly exemplified in the triune God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We as believers in Jesus should take note of this intimacy because this intimacy with the triune God can be ours as well. In the hustle and bustle of everyday life and the busy life that we all lead, we have to find the time and make it a habit to spend time in prayer. It can be difficult and prayer is often the first thing we ignore or do not do outside of reading Holy Scripture. Now, Jesus had a busy, hectic, demanding life on earth when he started his ministry. He had constant challenges from the religious authorities of the day. He fed large groups of people who were looking for comfort and hope. He had to deal with infighting from his disciples about who was arguing about who'd be the greatest, or unbelief for the pride of Peter, who would say that he would never deny him. However, Jesus always made time to be alone with the Father and pray. Prayer is, is, is the strong key, or is a key to a strong and intimate relationship with God. It gives us the confidence to approach the throne of grace, knowing that he hears us no matter what we ask for. And here's an important point. Even though he hears us, he may not always give us what we ask for when we want it. But we know we have a loving and caring God who cares for and listens to the deepest groans of our heart. It says in Scripture that the Spirit intercedes for us, and I believe that to be true. As I started at the beginning, we talked about two things that were certain in this world, death and taxes. Well, after a long-winded homily, I'd like to add a couple more things as Christians that we can be certain of as well. First thing is, is that Jesus has prayed for each one of us sitting here today and listening on YouTube. He did this with his priestly prayer, prayer nearly 2,000 years ago. And secondly, God immediately heard those prayers and answered them. So we know that we have a God who listens and a God who cares about each one of us. Yes, we all have to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's every year. And yes, we will all depart this world in one way or another. However, we are not of this world spiritually. So let us take this solace and be confident that Jesus has prayed for each one of us and that those prayers have been answered the moment he prayed them. Remember, we are not of this world. He takes and he loves and takes care of every one of those that are his. And remember, he is never very far away from each of us. Let us all say together the Apostles' Creed 
on page 52. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, Son our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In hope and joy, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. This morning, we pray for Gregory, our Archbishop. We pray for Bishop Fanuel, our sponsored student, Naomi, and the Diocese of Northern Malawi. We pray for strength and safety for Scott and Jenny Ramsey, who are currently in India. We pray for the country of India, as it has been ravaged by the COVID-19 virus. This week in our companion diocese of the Windward Islands, we pray for St. Paul Kalikakwa with St. John Belair and the Reverend Canon Ashton Francis. Mother's Union Diocesan President, Mrs. Hermione St. Bernard. We also continue to pray for all those affected by the volcanic eruptions on St. Vincent. In our own diocese, we pray for St. Michael Canmore and the Reverend Howard Thornton, the Reverend Seth Enrique, and the Reverend Sean Crusart, vocational deacon, and the Reverend Elizabeth Short, vocational deacon. In our parish family, we pray for Will and Jenny Pylon, Chris and Victoria Wallen family. We also pray for Ken and Elsie Pizzoli and Calvin Kuntz. In our prayers, we remember Ethan, Howard, Joe, Graham, Linda, Krista, Heather, Rose, B, Tim, Stephanie, Marion, Natasha, Jerry, Barbara, Michael, Chris and Diane, Mary Lou, and John and Sandra. Hear us, Lord of glory, that our Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of glory. glory, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of glory. glory, that he may grant us humility and be subject to one another in Christian love, let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of glory. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of glory. That by his power, wars and famine may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of glory. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick the weak and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of glory. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of glory. glory. Almighty God, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that, 
As he promised, he abides with us on earth and to the end of time, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who are trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you that you are the good shepherd of our souls. We pray this morning that we would allow you to shine the light of your glory into our hearts. May you never leave us and may we never leave the safety of your fold. We pray that you will guide us and shepherd us through this mortal life every day until we meet you face to face. Until that day, may the Holy Spirit renew the image of God within each of us. And together we'll say the grace, the grace, the grace of, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God and the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I received a letter from the Archbishop. Dear people of St. Aldham Anglican Church Vulcan, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I am delighted to inform you that God willing, it is my intention to ordain to the order of deacons, Dean Hartung of this parish on Tuesday, June 29th, 2021 at 7 p.m. at the Cathedral Church of the Redeemer, Calgary. Given these days of distancing and protection, this will be a closed service with only sponsors, officiating clergy and family members in attendance. For many years, Dean has been a vital part of this parish, offering gifts and talents in many areas. His deep faith, great love for his fellow parishioners, and care and compassion for all he meets will be assets in his journey as a transitional deacon. Please keep Dean in your prayers as he prepares for this new ministry. Peace and blessings be with you all. The Most Reverend Gregory Kerr Wilson, Archbishop of Calgary. Now I just have one question for you, Ken and Chris. Did you recognize this person at all? Did you think the Archbishop was talking about our dean? <laughs> or possibly some other dean in the diocese? I think he gilded the lily just a bit there. Anyways, please remember to pray for Dean and we will each Sunday until June 29th. The spirit of truth leads you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and the works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ Jesus.